Many individuals often get scared when they think of forming a company. They assume there is immense amount of paperwork and that the cost involved would be astronomical. Well, in my opinion, these individuals are misinformed. Today, we will take a look at what a memorandum of association is and how it plays a role in formation of a company. Once you have set of people who plan to form a company, then the next step is to pen down the fundamentals of this company. The first and most fundamental document being the Memorandum of Association. Section 4 of the Companies Act 2013 primarily deals with the Memorandum of Association, which simply put is a document that gives an outsider basic information about the company, such as what is the name of the company, where is the company set up, what is the business of the company, who all are shareholders of the company, and so on. To make things even simpler, the government has included a schedule in the Act. This schedule contains various tables with different formats of a memorandum of association that may be directly adopted by the company with suitable adjustments to be made such as filling out factual details. A memorandum of association is a very structured document which is standardized so as to make people's life easier while reading it. A few clauses of a MOA are the name clause, the situation clause, the object clause, and so on. In the name clause, it must be remembered that the company's name must comply with other rules set out under the Act. What this basically means is that the name must end with the words private limited in case of a private limited company and just the word limited in case of public limited company. Furthermore, the name of the company cannot be one which is already registered and must not be deceptively similar to other registered companies such that people are misled. Finally, the company must not be in contravention of any laws of India. For instance, one cannot use words that are morally wrong or words that may be offensive to a class of persons. And also, the name cannot contain words that may mislead people to believe that the company is linked with the central or state government unless such use has been approved by the government. Next, we have the situation clause, which simply sets out the address where this company will be operating out of. Out of all of these clauses in a MOA, the most critical clause, in my opinion, is the object clause, which refers to the business to be carried out by the company. This is the most critical clause since this clause will decide what the kind of business activities are lawful for the company to enter into. And more importantly, any activity undertaken by the company which falls outside of this clause will be deemed void under the doctrine of ultra-virus. This is why this clause must be absolutely carefully drafted to ensure it is well-structured, clear, and contains all necessary axillary businesses that the company may undertake in the future. For instance, if a company may be into the business of distributing medical supplies in wholesale, it may be best to include objects such as developing medical supplies, manufacturing medical supplies, manufacturing other products required to contain medical supplies, and establishing, managing, operating, and dealing in retail medical outlets, franchises, stores, and other allied businesses and supporting activities. If any activity is missing, then the company would require to have the MOA amended and modified to include such activity. Not having an activity mentioned in the MOA makes it extremely risky for the company to carry on the unmentioned activity, since courts of law would not be entertaining such company's plea when it gets in trouble. That would be all. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, then please do hit subscribe, like and share.